What a five days it has been there at Crystal Palace in review. Roy Hodgson was already under pressure due to the lack of results, fell ill on Thursday at training, went to the hospital. He is doing better, but then today the official news that he chose to step down and that Oliver Glasner will be their next manager. It's a lot to sort through and think about, Tim. Uh, your reaction to how this all played out? Well, first and foremost, uh, obviously his health is the most important thing. Football in this situation uh, takes a back seat. He is a, he is a Crystal Palace man through and through. Steve Parrish said that in his statement, um, and I certainly agree with that. On the football side, you, you, he came into state of the ship against something that, that Parrish referenced. He did that. In the summer, probably should have mm -hmm. gone. The club probably should have went in a different direction, had the foresight, but they didn't. And, and when they brought him back, they didn't create a better squad. I still think this squad is average and, and, and as it was last season. So when you look at that, you say he's coming to set his ship. They got the new manager bounce, but there wasn't there wasn't a pathway for this team to get better. So now we're stuck in a situation where we are. And and Joel Ward said it there in his interview. There's a lot of noise. The manager who they who they all adore, by the way, is in the hospital. Then he steps down. Then a new manager comes in. The two best players are still injured. Not winning games like there's a lot for, for these players to deal with. What comes to mind for you, Danny? Um, what Joel Ward said there, really, in one word in particular, car clarification. I think it's great that the club has clarification, but this is something that should have been done after the Brighton game because you're now looking at the game today. They play Everton. Then at the weekend, they play Burnley. Two of the biggest games of the season. Absolutely huge. So, therefore, you get beat by Brighton. We know Roy Hodgson, his, def his strongest point has been the defensive side of things. They've been leaking goals left, right and centre. So, after the Brighton game, you then relieve him of his duties you then have the opportunity to bring your new man in. You look at the Chelsea game and say, OK, the Chelsea game's a little bit of a bonus game. Anything we get from here is a bonus. The manager is then on the training ground, and then you're going into these two games, starting with today against Everton, with a clear plan in place. We're going to go through the team news. Obviously, they've changed the system. They're going to a back three, which is what the, manager, the new manager likes. But I just think that it should have been done sooner in order to give the players the best chance. And Tim, I, I'm listening here to you guys. Mm. I feel like I want a little more context on the timing and the immediacy yeah. of what's happening. Well, what Danny's saying is the danger for me is you're going to change the new manager without even having taken training is going to change the formation, right, with, with players that I don't think actually suit mm -hmm. that formation, okay? So now you have, you have these six-pointers today and, the, and this following week, and they are six-pointers. People say that a lot. These are big games. If they lose today, they get dragged right into the relegation race. So for me, why not change the manager sooner? Go to Chelsea. If, as you said, if you get anything, you, you get anything. What you do get out of it is a training yeah. session to make sure you understand the formation going into these two games that are must wins. And we have heard this name, Oliver Glasner, and again, it was speculated all weekend. It became official today. A little more about Glasner. His first job as a manager, he notably led Lask to the top flight in Austria. His next two stops were in Germany. First, he went to Wolfsburg, where he qualified for European football in both of his seasons there. And he most recently managed Eintracht Frankfurt and won the Europa League in 2022. Daniel, let's focus uh, on the fit and maybe... Mm -hmm. The immediacy, the, uh, the, the impact he may have immediately. Well, it needs to be immediate. I think one of the things that people say about him is that he's a project manager. You know, you've got younger players coming through. He, he can change things in the summer. You have to get to the summer first staying in the Premier League. Now, predominantly played a back three at Eintracht Frankfurt, had great success, played a three and a four at Wolfsburg. Now he's going to come to a Crystal Palace team. He, he plays with a, a high press. The team play really aggressive on the counter-attack. Now, with all the goodwill in the world, they're not things that you would attribute to Crystal Palace. Mm -hmm. So he has to deal with the plays that he's got from now until the end of the season. So does he step back a little bit and play what's best for the best for the team and best for the players? Or does he say, no, this is my way and we're going for it? But for me, it is a risk just because of the squad that he has. It's at that time of the appointment we're still brand new, Tim. We all think about the fits. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, let me say I wholeheartedly agree with, with Danny. I, I worry. Um, but if I sit here and, and, I, and I, for a minute, play devil's advocate, I... You have to hope that in the interview process, that Steve Parrish asks Glasner, let's hypothetically look at this team. We can't change it. We can't bring anybody mm -hmm. in. Your style, your pressing, your wingbacks, your back three, can you get results with these players? If the answer, which we, which we think and hope, was the right answer, and, and he knew the players and he understood that they could, he could work with those players in that profile, you hope then that Steve Parrish looked at it and said, okay, this is the guy because he is, he's, a, he's a project manager. His Frankfurt teams play unlike any of these Crystal Palace players I think can adapt to, but how quickly can they do it? It's going to take – I think it takes a little bit of, yeah. of time, but they don't have any time. It, 
And sorry, the fact that the players have to adapt as well, because you've got Elise, where does he fit into this? He's going to have to become a centre forward. Mm-hmm. Eze, it's OK, he can sort of become that number 10 from a, fr- from a three-man midfield. But you're going to play 3-5-2, and I'm not too sure there's two centre forwards that you can rely on within the Crystal Palace squad. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.